So we have been drowning in AI model updates recently. OpenAI bought Windsurf, Google dropped new models at their annual developer conference, Claude finally went from version 3.7 to version 4, but here's the thing, you're still stuck not knowing which one to actually use. So in this video, I'll cut through all the noise, showing you exactly what actually matters for building real apps, because I have researched and tested all of this for hours, and here is what most of the AI influencers really don't want you to know. All of these what we call frontier models are basically the same now. They are all so good that unless you have a very specific need in a specific niche, you won't notice a difference. The real problem isn't picking the best model, it's knowing when to use which one. So let's jump right in. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Rob and I've been a coder for over 20 years, but now I teach non-technical founders here on YouTube, how to build the next million dollar idea with AI all on their own without drowning in endless developer cost. And if you want to see how exactly I use all of these tools to build real apps, check out my AI coding blueprint with hours and hours of actual tutorials that will teach you everything that you need to know. And there's already over 80 other founders in there building their apps right now. And if that sounds like you, the link is in the description down below. All right, now let's break down what actually happened recently because it's been absolutely mental. First up, OpenAI a while ago released the O3 model and it's crazy powerful, but it's also way too expensive to actually code with it. I still found a good way to use it and that's really problem analysis and planning. So if you ask O3 to analyze a problem and create a detailed step-by-step -step plan, this works really well. And with the right prompt, O3 will then go into your project and often go away for five, 10 or 15 minutes and then presenting you with very detailed findings. Then you can switch to a different, much cheaper model to actually execute the plan. This works, I have tried it and it can definitely save you from getting stuck in an AI coding death spiral with other models. And I will actually show you how I would do this later in the video. Then in other big news, OpenAI bought Windsurf and almost immediately Windsurf released their own SWE-1 models. They claim that it's almost as good as Sonnet 3.5, which if true, means that you can get really solid coding completely for free. But here's the thing though, I haven't tested this extensively because I focus more on the best in class AI models for coding. But from what I could see on places like Twitter, it's really good if you're just starting out and you don't want yet another subscription. And that's because without Windsurf's pro plan, so you're paying absolutely nothing, you get unlimited access to the SWE-1 Lite version of this model. But if you do subscribe, you get unlimited access to the full deal, which is pretty crazy for $15 a month. Now to Google, they went absolutely nuts at their annual Google I.O. conference. Gemini 2.5 Flash got updated with a new version, which is now somehow even more powerful. Then Gemini 2.5 Pro also got better because they got a deep think model that unfortunately right now almost no one has access to, but from the benchmarks that they have released, it looks really good and like, Really no other model could beat it, but we'll have to see and wait. And then there was a brand new diffusion model, which is supposedly even five times faster than Gemini 2.5 Flash. And that hopefully means that it will be much cheaper because it requires fewer resources to run. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Here's what matters the most though. Gemini 2.5 Pro is now a legitimate competitor for Claude for the best code execution model. This has been the case really since the release of Gemini 2.5 Pro, but as you can see, they are head to head in the LLM rankings on Open Router, which update every week. So you can really see which are the most used models right now. But if you look closely, you can actually see that Sonnet has picked up this week 14% while Gemini lost 8%. There is no stopping Claude because Speaking of Claude, they finally released version four of their models. And this is a huge deal because people often refer to Anthropic as the sleeping giant. They do not release something often, but when they do, boy, oh boy. So this week we got Claude Opus 4 and Claude Sonnet 4. But here is where things get weird because so far everyone, if we go back to the rankings, is using Sonnet to code. But now with Opus 4, this has changed. 
Because if we look at the benchmarks for them, you can basically see that Opus 4 and Sonnet 4 really are extremely similar, except for one case, which is the most important one, agentic terminal coding. And to be honest with you, I had to look this up. I didn't know what was the difference between agentic coding and agentic terminal coding. And the difference is basically between you going to Claude and asking it to generate some code and you working inside a coder like Cursor or Windsurf, where it has the ability to run some tests, run some terminal commands and figure out problems that it can then fix. And the second you give Opus 4 this capability, which again means basically any AI editor, it vastly pulls ahead. So it's 20% better than even Sonnet 4 and significantly better than OpenAI's O3, OpenAI's GPT 4.1 and even Gemini 2.5 Pro by a huge amount. There is only one big problem and that is that Opus is extremely expensive. It is even more expensive than OpenAI's O3, which no one would use because it is too expensive. So you can see that it costs $15 per million token input and $75 per million output. So if you compare this to O3, which costs $10 per 1 million input and $40 for 1 million output, it gets clear that Opus is completely unreasonable to use for day-to-day -day coding. There is one trick though, and that is going for the Claude Max plan, which I am on, but they come in flavors of either $100 a month or $200 a month. Because if you do, it gives you almost unlimited access through their own coding tool called Claude code. But if you're not on the max plan, it makes zero sense to use Opus. And instead, you really should be using Sonnet 4, which costs the same as Sonnet 3.7. And in fact, also 3.5, because all models in the Claude Sonnet family cost exactly the same. And in my experience, Claude 4, after a few hours of testing, performs fine, just like Sonnet 3.7 did before. And when I say that these models are now all good enough, I mean it. There are changes coming our way, but they will most likely not be huge leaps forward in terms of raw coding performance itself anymore. Instead, they will likely focus on being more autonomous, multiple agents working together on your code base independently, getting work done much faster, but that's a story for another video. So here is what I actually do in practice right now when building real apps. For day-to-day -day coding, I would stick to Claude 4 Sonnet or Gemini 2.5 Pro unless you are on the Claude Max plan and you use Claude code to actually get your work done. Personally, I do exactly the same. I still use Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude now 4 Sonnet all the time, when I don't use Claude code, which happens a lot. Because both of these models, Claude 4 and Gemini 2.5 Pro are virtually identical in performance. Both Anthropic for Claude and Google for Gemini claim that their models are the best for whatever benchmark they chose to test and then promote. But in reality, I switch between both of them every day, constantly. And honestly, even I can't tell the difference most of the time. To me, there are just three big differences between these two models right now. Number one is that Claude's models are trained with data up to March 2025. So they probably have more recent documentation knowledge, which means that they might might get stuck less often when building new things. But number two is the context window or how much the AI can remember before it starts forgetting. Gemini 2.5 Pro's context window is five times as large as Claude's, but it matters much less than you think because more and more AI coders now do something called context compression, where they just go through your entire context tokens and say, let's just do the equivalent of a zip file and then continue going indefinitely. This is not perfect, but it levels out the playing field a little bit, so it becomes less important. And then number three is design, because so far I haven't tested it with Claude 4 yet, but Sonnet 3.7 was the best model to design user interfaces. All AI models can do it, but at least in version 3.7, Sonnet had the best understanding of what a good user interface or design might actually look like. 
But even with the best models, we might get stuck sometimes. And this is where I start using O3. This is expensive. It is only available on the max tier for Cursor. And it costs, I think for the high reasoning mode, it costs 10 credits in Windsurf. So it is really expensive. But as I said, with the correct prompt, it might go through your project for five, 10, 15 minutes, and it just understands everything. It will find bugs that the others won't be able to find. It will create plans that are so powerful, that are so well thought through, that any other model will have a really easy time implementing them. The only thing that I would suggest is that when you use O3 occasionally, is that you give it a lot of context. So you explain your problem in as much detail as possible. You mention files, you mention things like what you have tested, where the bug occurs, or the feature that you have in mind, maybe compared with something. Give it as much information as possible and then also ask it to fully understand your project, look up the entire structure and then let it run. Because when it comes back, ultimately, even if it takes 10 or 15 minutes, it will have found a solution more often than other models. But going back to Windsurf, if you are on a budget, then Windsurf's SWE family of models is hard to beat because it is good enough to get started. It won't blow your mind, but it will get the job done. And most importantly, you will not need to download any additional AI coding tools that you need to configure. You just have to download Windsurf, choose WSE-1 Lite. It's completely free, even if you don't pay for Windsurf, which is crazy. And then you're ready to code. There's actually a link in the description down below that gets you 250 extra credits if you do decide to upgrade in the future, but you really don't have to. So when people on Twitter or YouTube say that this model is absolutely killing that model, they are just chasing clicks. And to be honest, I do it too. It's just the game we play. But in reality, you can pick any Frontier model and you'll be just fine. The difference between choosing something like Sonnet and Gemini is like choosing between a Ferrari and a Lamborghini when you're just learning how to drive. I hope that this takes some overwhelm away from you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.